Hey, I'm Stefan Papadakis. We're here at Willow Springs Raceway in Southern California, and we're gonna run our 2020 Drift Supra for the first time. It's really exciting because we spent so many months working on this car and it's finally finished. So let's get to the track and get testing. Before we were able to get onto the track, we had to finish the car's body. The body panels basically come from three places. We've got the factory Toyota component, which are the front and rear bumpers, a carbon fiber hood from Saibon, and then Rocket Bunny makes the overfender kit. That's all made out of fiberglass. So these kits don't come with any kind of instructions. You just hope that they fit well, and if they don't fit particularly perfect, then you have to deal with massaging it to make it fit as well as you can. After putting the hood on, we decided to keep the factory hood struts that keep the hood up once you open it. It makes it a lot easier when you work on the car. We then mounted the front bumper, and a lot of the front bumper mounting places are just gone now because we removed a lot of them. So there's a lot of brackets that we had to make to, to hold up the front bumper and the fenders. But first what we wanted to do is see how the body kit fits in the car. So we placed the body panels as close to where we thought they were gonna live, and then started taping everything on. And it doesn't hold it very well in position, but at least we know what we have to work with. Once we were confident that we can make the body kit work, we started trimming the components. The rear of the car, we cut up so much that we're gonna have to replace the rear quarter panel. The reason we do this is because these cars get hit a lot in the front and also in the rear. In the rear of the car especially, there's a lot of the unibody back there that if it gets hit, it's really hard to fix at the track. So what we do is we basically cut off all of the areas that the rules allow us to cut off. And then we take another quarter panel from a part that we get from the Toyota dealer. When your car gets hit from the side and they need to repair it, the body shops can order these whole quarter panel rocker A-pillar kits. That's what we ordered was this whole side of a car essentially, but just the sheet metal. After deciding how much of it we needed, Sean went in back and then cut off just the part that we were gonna use. And then we we started installing that on the car. And the cool thing about this is these parts can be replaced relatively easily at our shop and we don't have to unweld things and take them to the body shop and get stuff pulled. We can just drill out the rivets and however we installed this quarter panel on top of the factory car and we can replace that relatively easily. We've built the last couple cars this way and it's worked out really well for us. Once Sean cut just the part that we wanted out of the side of the car, we set it on there and tried to figure out exactly how we were gonna mount it. What we decided was to keep this top lip that wraps around the C-pillar on the car. That way it located it relatively well and it had something to hold it up. Now you can see that area where it fills in. You can see how that whole back corner is replaceable. We can replace the fiberglass over fender and we can also replace relatively easily the rear quarter panel. What's worked well for us for mock-up on body kits and parts are these tools called Clecos, and they're essentially a temporary rivet. So you drill an eighth inch hole, and then the Clecos go into that hole and hold your panels together. And since the car is gonna be totally wrapped after, we're fine putting some eighth inch holes in the car. And then once you wrap the car, you'll never see those small little holes. But we've even done it in parts that were eventually gonna be painted. And what we'll do is we'll weld up those little holes, sand them smooth, and then once you paint over it, you never knew that somebody had drilled a hole in that panel. So Sean used a little technique there where he turns the drill in reverse and it creates a little dimple. So when you turn it back clockwise, the drill bit doesn't wanna walk. After we had the body kit installed, Alex starts doing the wrap. He just wraps right over all of these multicolor panels. And sometimes the wraps are one big wrap that you put on the car, but this one, because we have matte black finish and then the gloss yellow, it actually has to be applied in several layers. So what Alex does is he looks at the picture of our, our livery, our design, and then he starts masking off where the different lines are gonna be, installs the different layers of wrap, and then hand cuts them for all the lines in the design. And again, this is another way that we're able to continue to repair the car at our shop and not need a body shop. So once we had the car totally wrapped, we put it in our unmarked trailer and then headed up to Willow Springs to do some testing. Right when we got to the track, Sean noticed that the brake pedal felt a little spongy pulling out of the trailer. And we found that one of the banjo fittings, the brake line fittings into the caliper was leaking a little bit. So he fixed that leak and then rebled the front brakes. If you look close, you can see the front lip spoiler that wasn't on there earlier when we were showing the mock-up of the body kit. So now this is the full body kit installed with all the decals. We also use these hood latches from a company called AeroCatch. They're nice because they're low profile and there's no pin or anything like that to lose. It's all integrated into one system that lives on the hood. There was another thing that we noticed as Sean was pulling the car out of the trailer was that he wanted to change the clutch adjustment a little bit. There's a stop on the firewall and we just adjusted that stop a little bit so the clutch engagement would have a little bit more play in the bottom. First laps in this brand new build, you know, the hard work of you guys. And it's, it's kind of a sentimental moment. And we always have a fire extinguisher with us whenever the car's running, just in case. 
So we made a list of what we wanted to achieve at this first test day. And it's just going around the track, making sure the car feels okay. We bring it in. We make sure that everything, you know, still bolted on and sounds okay. And then we slowly start stepping up on the performance each time we bring the car back out. For the first few laps of testing, we're just making sure the car stops, steers, and everything feels okay for the driver. Freddie will start getting on the throttle harder and then on the brakes harder and then start steering it harder lap after lap until we do about three or four laps. Then he'll bring it in. We'll have a talk with him, do a visual on the car and make sure that everything's still sound. <laughs> this is rad. Woo -hoo. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like how the car turned out and the look of it, especially the back of it. I really like the styling and it's going to look even more badass once we get the new wheels installed. So after the first few laps, Freddie and I went into the trailer to review our list of what we wanted to achieve for the day and have a little bit of a download on how we thought the car felt. So I, I tried to, I did a couple swallow them exercises to see if it'll bind or any kind of like run out of flow or anything like that. Felt great. So the AEM Infinity system that we use that runs the engine has a full data logger. So I can download with the laptop all of the data from the test session and look at it and make sure the temperatures are okay, oil pressure, all the different systems in the engine are working okay before we go out for another run. So these next laps, Freddie was gonna get on it harder and actually start drifting. So he'll start with some really mild drifts, low angle, not for a very long time, feel it out, and then start going progressively harder and harder and bigger and bigger drifts, longer and longer. What he's gonna test here is how the car feels at big angle. So there's a couple things that he needs the car to do, is counter steer well and have good steering feedback for the driver. So we're really happy with how the car turned out. We have a big list of things that we want to update before the next time we come out. We want to change the driver position. He wanted to move the driver's seat a little bit inboard and a little bit rearward. We'll eventually turn up the boost, put nitrous on it, get our new wheels, come back out again and test some more. Overall, a very successful test day. A high five for everybody when the car runs, stays running the whole test session and all the wheels stay on it. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did hit the like button, if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. Thanks to everybody that helped with building of the car. Sean, Mauro, Aldo that helped with the crew today. And I'm going to get you guys out to some of the drift events this year. So stay tuned for more drift videos and thanks for watching.